we breathe as one, drawing into the presence of our God and Creator. Yahweh God and Creator, we offer thanksgiving to know that your spirit guides us in the perfect nature of your divine. We are one in you, welcoming in the fullness of your grace, the awesome wonder of your glory. We are one in you. One of the things I'd like to do is kind of step back for a moment, and I know that we're, we've been going into the deeper teachings over these past months, and we've been seeing wonderful feedback. I've been getting some beautiful emails and text messages from people offering Thanksgiving for the different messages, and again, I want to state to you that these are messages that I don't even know where God's going to bring me in the night. There's thoughts that go through my mind throughout the week. There's considerations of uh, thoughts and the spiritual things that I encounter in prayer calls with different people and different experiences that come up, but when I come to the prayer call, it is rested in my heart deeply that I relinquish everything that I experience to come to this moment to seek what it is that God wants to reveal. And right now, what rises in me is the importance of bringing forth a simple reminder and, quite honestly, a warning. And the simple reminder is that Every single thing we see a blessing upon this earth, every single thing we encounter that is any form of blessing comes directly of God. There's times when we find ourselves speaking and, and sharing words with people that we thought were of intellect, but they're actually deeper than we thought we, what we thought we held within us. That is God's spirit manifesting through us. There are times we find ourselves in a point of frustration, yet we engage first in prayer and we find ourselves moving into a place of peace, patience, and understanding for the situation we're facing. That is God. That is God manifesting within you to transform the nature of a spiritual nature, and it comes as simply as relinquishing self to allow for God's presence to be known in that moment. Now, many times, we don't even engage in that way. We just find ourselves as God flows through us, if we're paying attention. But that's also what happens in the spiritual realm. And I want to speak to the word of vigilance, because there's been a number of things that have unfolded over these past, well, probably month and a half, and really over the last six months with a number of people I have been blessed to pray with over time. And... The thing that just really stirs me in it is as I've watched and seen things unfold, I've seen people blessed in ways that just completely blow the mind and are miraculous in nature. And I've witnessed people speak back to me their description of the miraculous they encountered, whether it be the individual, a woman, uh, actually, I won't mention her name, but um, she and her family, she was dead for over 20 minutes, and by grace, God awakened her when I was blessed to pray over her. I had to stand in awe because I knew that it was nothing I did. So again, it comes back to this recognition that it is God that manifests through us in these situations. As I prayed over another individual, as you know, and I would recommend to each and every one of you, please go and listen to this week's release that Andy put up for us on the website when he releases 8 and 9. That's episodes 8 and 9 
through the YouTube channel. He also sends it out over Facebook. It is important that you remember and understand that not only does God flow through us in the state of blessing, but the spiritual realm flows through us in the times when we have shut ourselves off to God's presence and we just find ourselves in the midst of a situation argumentative, yelling or screaming at somebody or upset, angered, or even in the point of swearing where we take on the spirit of profanity or something like that. And we don't even realize that we're in it until all of a sudden we have done it and we're going, oh my God, I, I, I did this again. And the spiritual process is unfolding all the time. And I've said this to you many times. Are we honestly vigilant in the nature of our actions and if they do not align from the nature of God, are we taking pause and centering into God's presence to release the things that do not align with God's presence? Are we taking pause when God comes through us in a remarkable way and offering thanksgiving for what we witness? And in that vigilance, we will recognize God's presence. And I would ask that each and every one of you, when you encounter a time that you found yourself speaking above your own standing of life or understanding or knowledge, please, please consider journaling these moments. Sit down prayerfully and allow for God to help you to write down and physically set a stake in the ground that says there. That was where God flowed through me. That was where I met God in my time of need. That was where God blessed somebody else in a time of need. And please journal these things. And I say this to you because I have watched over these past now 20 plus years, 30 years, where I have seen things of a miraculous nature unfold and kept my mouth quiet until people spoke and described the nature of the experiences that they themselves encountered as we had prayed. And when they described these things, they described them as unexplainable. They described them as only God. The peace they knew, the restoration they knew, the physical healing they encountered, the healing and transformation throughout their family or the corporate body that they serve. But the reason why I'm trying to point out the importance of vigilance in this is because many times I have witnessed this for thousands of people. And then I'm blessed to encounter some of these people one year, two years, five years, six years, seven years later. And they don't even have the first recollection of anything that they experienced. <clears throat> And quite frankly, I've been confounded by that. Because in many cases, I journaled their words. And I ask them, in some cases, could we pray? And they say, well, yeah, you know, I love when you do that Yahweh thing. And in, in many cases, that right there is a sign to me. That's, that's like a, a spiritual revelation in that moment that, I can't even define for you how many people have said to me, oh, Larry, would you just do that Yahweh thing? Or, Larry, I love when you do that Yahweh thing. This is not about a Yahweh thing. This is about Yahweh, God, and Creator, that perfect, holy, and blessed name. And we remain vigilant. Did we just look at that with a cavalier attitude? So much so that we became cavalier that we can't even touch the remembrance of the miraculous things God did for us. And as I sat with some people over the phone, I'm like, well, do you remember when we were going through this? And they were like, well, well you know, I kind of remember touching base with you. And, you know, we kind of prayed about this and we talked about that. And I'm like, yeah, well, do you remember when you called me and you told me about this situation? Like, oh, well, I don't know. And I... And then I'll read to them. God usually wakes up to me in prayer, but there's been times where I pull up the journal. Most of the times it comes out of me in prayer in actual specific language that the person shared with me. Not my perceived notion of what they experienced, but their view. Now, God gifts me with an awareness that I can see into the situation and I can see the spiritual things being transformed, released. God making new the things within the order of principalities. However, I want to hear what other people's experiences are within this. 
And as I have done that with some of the people that have called and said, you know, well, I, re I really need God's presence. I really need to pray with you. I really need to engage. And I'm like, okay, do you remember? We are in, we've done prayer, and they're feeling blessed again. And I, and then they're still kind of questioning certain things about their lives. And I can say, you know, do you remember what happened when we engaged in prayer five years ago? I remember when you reached out and we engaged in this process. And, and they're like, well, not really. And I, I start to share. And I'm detailing the specifics that they spoke to me. And many times they end up in tears on the phone because they can't believe they can't remember it. And they remember the words that they spoke to me, but they can't remember the experience. And I'm sitting there, what about the vigilance? What about the taking the moment to recognize that this is not just some Yahweh thing that we do? This is revealing the very nature of God within the experiences that we encounter upon this earth and choosing God above those experiences. Becoming vigilant in the recognition that it is God that manifested through our time in prayer. That it is God that brought forth the peace. Not some guy named Larry that does this Yahweh thing. but the recognition that it is the one perfect holy being above all things of creation that literally manifests and actually manifests out of his love for you and out of her perfect wisdom for you. And in my heart, there's been times when I've been looking at people and I'm like seeing that they can't even touch the remembrance of what they encountered and watch them just fall away from the blessing. And I'm sitting there watching them in the fullness of love, unable to even see the blessings that they're presently in, and watching them fall further and further away. But then the encouraging side of the point is where God does bless me to be with them in love once again. And to be able to speak back the words that they spoke to me. And they break down in tears of remembrance. And then I sense within them, by God's grace, the spirits of shame and guilt. The spirits of self-judgment because they can't believe they forgot these things. And I'm like, well, hey, how beautiful is it? that you and I together now, we get to release three captives from this moment because you have somehow shifted yourself to a place of shame and guilt and self-judgment for the very nature of what is our human walk. Encountering things of a spiritual nature, releasing them in the fullness of God's love so that the captives might be restored according to God's design, not our ignorance or willfulness. In willfulness, we name them in corruption. In willfulness, we name them as attributes other than God. In ignorance, we define them through our actions in things that do not align with God, through confusion, sadness, perversion, anger, hostility, aggression. But I would ask for each and every person to please, please embrace a vigilant awareness. A vigilance that remembers and knows that each and every time you find yourself functioning at the higher levels of your abilities, the higher offerings to those in need, or the ability to process through things of great suffering, it is because of God within you that you are able to do these things. It is because of God that all things of blessing emerge from. Be not governed by a forgetful awareness. Please remember that God is so personal, so perfectly connected unto you that God is flowing through you in every single moment. 
And please remember that there will be times that you will just find yourself speaking to somebody and just words of wisdom come out that you did know within you, but you didn't expect them to come forth there once again as God. You are participatory in the living prayer, whether you recognize it or not. I'm just asking that you will remember each and every moment that it is not just something that you are doing at functioning at a higher level. It is God with you that is compelling you, impelling you, like moving you from within to be the greatest self. And remember that it is proof of the personal awareness of God that is in you. And please, as I mentioned earlier, consider the possibility and the importance of journaling the blessed experiences that you encounter with God, even the subtle ones. Because there are times upon this human walk when you will find yourself questioning whether you remember God's presence or not, and you will be able to draw back to that journal, that stake in the ground, and say, there, there was where God flowed through me. There, there was where God blessed me. There, there was where God used me to bless another. Here was where God's miraculous unfolded for the sake of my sister, my brother, my friend, my whatever. Here's where healing took hold within my sister that was suffering under cancer. Here's where healing took hold for the sake of my brother that I lost in a car accident and I found great peace in discovering who he had become because when I prayed, found God's presence and was released from the spirit of grief, sadness, sorrow, and loss, I discovered that which my loved one had become. Journal. Set that stake in the ground. And please, above all things, remember, it is not by your power that these things transpire, but it is by God within you. All things of a corrupt nature that come upon this earth begin first in the order of principalities, the spiritual realm. All things of blessing emerge from one source, Yahweh, God present, the perfect nature that is our divine creator, our holy Elohim, God, triune form of the Godhead, Yahweh, Yeshua, Avon. So of all the teachings that we've covered over these past couple months, getting into the deeper understandings of grace healing, we have merely touched the surface. But if you go back through these and listen to them all, you will find the same thing. Even though God shores them up through me and brings me different understandings and speaks beautifully through Ina of these different experiences that we encounter and the miraculous that unfolds and how they tie to the story of how the heavens function and how God's grace manifests through them, even though this does occur in this manner, we are poised to reveal God in every moment of blessing. And we are poised to reveal God in every moment of corruption. Because we have come upon any form of corruption in God, we seek God first. And if we see the situation before us, not aligning with the nature of God, that is when we reveal God. How do we do that? We relinquish our hold upon the things that do not reflect God's nature and allow God's presence in. So all things of blessing can reveal God. All things of corruption can reveal God. If we submit ourselves to remember that it is Yahweh within us that brings forth all blessing, it is Yahweh within us that will transform all things of corruption to blessing. So I offer thanksgiving to know that each and every one of you that joined us this night will be blessed in the fullness of God's grace as this week unfolds. And I would ask you to keep that word close. Vigilance. Vigilance upon God's holy nature. 
vigilance upon anything not of that nature so that you might become God so that anything not of God would become that which God sees it to be. And I welcome Ina to speak up and extend her love unto you and to allow for God's love to flow through her as she is led to speak in God's grace. Well, thank you. And uh, I'd like to add to something that was rising in me. And um, I, too, uh, just briefly just share this um, many, many years. And uh, for many, many years, I think I have journaled I don't know how many things that I would just sit and uh, write things uh, to, to God and uh, would reflect back, not realizing how, how far along I was in just being childlike with him, especially when we lived up north and raising children out in our sitting at the fire burn barrel, just looking up in the sky and words would flow and seeking him in times of being alone when the kids were at school and shut in in the snow or uh, throughout my years it was just uh, part of that's why I'm so connected in Larry and I and Grace Union we have so many things that are in common but yet I speak in a different way we're all uniquely different and so that is important and I know many of you do journal and then some of you aren't really led to do so but it's really a I just encourage you to start doing that. Even sometimes God wakes you in the night and you can't get to sleep. And I found myself, well, I wasn't. It wasn't just not going to sleep. He wanted to, I wanted to be with him. So many times I would wake and just be alone with him to sit and listen to my heartbeat. And he would begin to speak. And I'm that kind of person. I absolutely just am drawn to him and a new song would rise to sing to him, or a, even a new dance. And then here I go back to sleep, and I wake up my normal time as if I was asleep at 8 o'clock. And other times to be an intercession for someone in Africa, I found out. And I journaled those things, something going on at work. So I just encourage you all, as the words being spoken by Larry, that, that God has a purpose for that and it's for you to refer back to show that God was with you in everything you have done and one other thing I'd like to add you know we all are going through things in our lives and mine in particular is one in which transitioned me into great healing but in my professional career uh, going through some some things that I had to um, prepare uh, on a um, without going into it legal ground had to get some deposition or uh, written up um, for some things that occurred and happened to me in my workplace and it's in legal ground well in that time without going into it I had to go back into my notes of my things that I kept from work to, to uh, put for the deposition for the EEOC and some other things that I won't go into. But what it did is it, I, I didn't expect it. I just, you know, reading my emails and things that had happened to me that I had kept from uh, certain people that had come, I thought come, had come against me. But it wasn't me. It was those spiritual influences, demonic spirits. And here I am sitting, putting this deposition together for uh, the courts and that kind of thing and I'm finding myself take sort of they were rising and 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 of course engaged in prayer with Larry I, I didn't realize that it, it had affected me and what I went through and I had journaled a lot of stuff personally and went back and here they were rising again and I had to release them and I had a period of time here you know and still going through this but it's not me going through it's it's revelation it's a blessing I'm coming to understand that even to greater which I sort of knew but now really seeing the reason why we were here upon this earth is we draw close to God if we seek him first having that personal relationship we then go out and do the things that he's called us to, those gifts and talents, the things we love to do, our career. Whenever we're around people and things rise up and somebody's offended you, well, you release that 
thing of that that spirit of resentment or condemnation or whatever that body that you're you've been put into that is where you're setting the captive free and it brings you such joy and happiness and love of God for whatever maybe yesterday you didn't care about and all of a sudden you have this sense of love you're releasing those captives free back into God's embrace to come into the ground you're in to be blessed and that's in every breath you take and how do you get there from my experience is being alone with him having that intimate time and there is no words to put to that you can share that all day long you can read it in a book all the all the days you could go to the to the bookstore and get whatever book you wanted about how to have a relationship with God and they're great I'm not putting those down nor the scriptures I'm not putting those down bottom line our time alone with him that's where I am totally surrendered and sometimes you wonder the things we go through I run back to him I can't do anything until I go first to him I'm not perfect but I will not and it's just like being childlike childlike let him take it release and I don't care who you are things we're going through every day even now I got here late because of the situation with the family and I got here late blah 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 I'm here speaking to each and every one of your hearts to be prepared for what God has deeper love and revelation being manifested in your life so Lord God these words being spoken into each one of your children receive fully deep within them to awaken the deepened parts of love that is already there being freed and delivered physically mentally spiritually financially in every area of their lives and all of that that they're involved in in the grounds that they walk in the ministry walking in the ministry you you are love to those that you're around so God I I thank you as you right now as they just engage even the words being spoken draw into you maybe be blessed being awakened releasing anything that is not of you of this earth and receiving the fullness of your love to just embrace there's nothing that they have to do so we thank you I praise you and worship you and give you this day and may those on the call of your children receive fully be blessed and know how deeply they are loved in your precious name and I would like to just extend and deepen one comment that Ina made that I think it is so important as she stated the importance of allowing for time alone with God please remember that this does not mean you have to separate yourself from the demands of the world or whatever but when you see something of difficulty rise let that be the moment that you choose to be alone with God breathe into God's presence if it's one breath we've talked about this before if it's three breaths if it's seven breaths if it's 21 breaths whatever it takes to allow for the life-giving presence of God to be known within that situation then later you encounter a situation that transforms changes you recognize captives being drawn into God's love and you see something of a miraculous nature rise let that be the moment to be alone with God you could be in the standing in the middle of a crowd and still be alone with God honoring God to recognize in awe not fear but in awe the nature of God's presence as it unfolds around you for blessing others for blessing and revealing God's glory and everything that you do and see let that be the time alone but in addition honor what Ina said and do take those moments when you wake up and you think it's called insomnia release that lie 
It's not insomnia. It's a blessed and holy opportunity to meditate upon God's presence. You will find deeper rest upon your body, even if you had zero hours of sleep. If you meditated upon God's presence throughout that time, I would guarantee you that when your alarm wakes up for school, I mean for work, school, whatever you happen to be doing, you will wake up with a new vigor, a new focus, and a new life. God is that powerful. Are we allowing for that power to flow through, or are we sequestering it and hiding it through spiritual frustration in the spirit of insomnia or whatever happens to be governing us? Are we entering upon our sleep feeling fatigued and not taking the moment to be with God and release the spirit of fatigue, the spirit of exhaustion, to trust and know that God brings us to a holy and blessed sleep? And may you each be blessed in a holy and blessed sleep in God's presence tonight covered within his love, sanctified by his grace, and moved forward to recognize his glory in the days ahead. We at Grace Healings love you dearly and offer thanksgiving for this time. May you each be blessed in every breath you receive. In Yahweh, Yeshua, Amen. Amen.